So we have climate, which is going to go from north to south. But as, do, well, as we do this, we're going to see well, there's a lot of variation in terms of the climate in South America. Uh, we can see that just in the, this wide array of colors on this particular climate region map. In other particular regions, for example, Southeast Asia or Middle East, very little variation. If there was, they were in upland areas, as the case is here with South America. So starting in with the north Right through here, we have the equator. And so the equator coming right through here makes sense. We're going to find our A climates. Once again, A, we think of it as tropical, so warm and moist. And so subsequently, of course, our Amazon rainforest is found here. So essentially the ITCZ, or the Intertropical Convergence Zone, so convergence in terms of our type of atmospheric mechanism that makes rain, convergence, air coming together that's warm and moist, is then forced to rise and eventually condenses and falls back down as rain, creating a dense rain band that we see in this blue area throughout much of the year. As we go away from that, though, we see in terms of the western side, we have variations. And so those variations relate to mountains, highland, upland areas. And so as you go up, temperature changes. And so you don't have that extreme hot, extreme moist temperature and precipitation characteristics. Instead, you get a little bit of variability, maybe through orographic, maybe your rain shadow area. And as you go up, once again, elevation uh, temperature uh, goes down. Now, this is very important when we look at South America along the western coast in terms of the various types of climates we see. We see some uh, B climates, which uh, we, we associate with arid, deserts, dry. And then we have on other sides, we've got uh, situations where we have kind of these, these sea climates in which we have moisture, uh, subtropical climates, oceanic climates in which we're getting that, uh, uh, that air coming off of an ocean, coming onto the land area, where in other areas, it's super dry. And this all also relates to those predominant wind patterns I mentioned beforehand when we looked at the Andes Mountains. And so we can see there's these different dry areas that relate to a little location of rain shadows. Further, we go down to more in the southern area, we can see there's some areas that are extremely dry. You look at Argentina, northern and, uh, uh, and western Argentina has a wide array of, of climates, uh, but it's got some very dry areas. And this is an area where they traditionally have a, an automobile race uh, called the Dakar Rally. It's essentially off-roading. And one of the challenges is vehicles being able to survive in these horrible conditions, these dry conditions, which we find in this particular area of the world. Uh, once again, try to relate things to Indiana, and in this case, some of you who are gearheads. Further, we looked at the area of the Colda Pampas, in which we saw a very comfortable climate, in which we saw good for agriculture. We saw the kind of the economic population core of South America. What do you know? It's located there where we find a temperate climate. And it's located there in the kind of southern Brazil, uh, northern Argentina, and Uruguay. You go all the way down to the southern tip of, uh, of, of South America, and you can actually see a tundra climate or an E climate uh, we see there. And this makes a lot of sense. We're not too far away on the southern tip of South America from Antarctica and all the penguins and the ice sheet and the very, very, very cold weather that we you know, associate with the very large continent landmass that is Antarctica.